Welcome to a recorded version of the March 10th Focus Community Engagement Session, Session Number 1. Tonight's presenter is Catherine I. Martins, Director of the Crystal Lake Public Library. Ms. Martins will be presenting on the topic, Why Today? Challenges for Tomorrow. I would like to thank all the members of the facilitating team for stepping up to be leaders in guiding this process. We are gathered together tonight to engage in a very important dialogue for our community. Why do we need a public library today? I'm sure you have heard someone say, everything is online now, so why do we even need a public library? By definition, a library is a collection of materials for reading, viewing, listening, study, or research. Libraries originally were a luxury of the powerful and wealthy. Private libraries, and then later subscription libraries, were all that existed. In the mid-1800s, there was a push for education, a desire to share knowledge and improve the plight of the common man. This is when truly public libraries, supported by public funds and freely accessible to all, began. So how did public library service begin in our community of Crystal Lake, Illinois? In 1913, the Crystal Lake Herald reported on the opening of a library in Crystal Lake. Here is an excerpt from that news article. On Saturday afternoon, November 15th, a circulating library will be open to the public. Through the generosity of Mrs. H. A. Dodge, whose attractive Crystal Lake home is now vacant, the library is installed upon the bookshelves, and chairs and tables have been placed in the reading room. At present, the library is composed largely of the best grade of fiction. In time, it is hoped to add history and technical works by the best authors. The following list of magazines and current publications will be available in the reading room. Harper's Monthly, Popular Mechanics, Popular Electricity, The Geographical Magazine, Ladies Home Journal, Good Housekeeping, Vogue, and The Garden Magazine. The idea of this reading room and library originated with a young men's club of the Congregational Church but the present scope of the enterprise will recognize no denominational bounds, and it is expressly understood that everyone, children as well as grown folks, shall be welcome at all times to the books and papers. There will be no charge, whatever, to patrons of the library for the use of books, and they can be had any Saturday between the hours of 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. The reading room will be heated and lighted during these hours. With an average of 925 visitors each day, the community's use of the Crystal Lake Public Library challenges the idea that libraries are going away. The Crystal Lake Public Library continues to be the busiest public library in McHenry County, circulating almost 1 million items each year. Compare that to the 280,000 items that were circulated 25 years ago when the Internet began to emerge in our lives. The Internet is not replacing the library. Rather, it appears to have expanded people's appetite for a large scope of materials. Recently, the Pew Research Center conducted a three-year study to determine the role libraries play in people's lives and in their communities. According to this study, 76% of Americans nationwide say they live in a library household, and 91% say that libraries are important to their communities. So why do we need a public library today? The core vision that established public libraries so many years ago continues into our 21st century, provide equal access to materials and services. The Crystal Lake Public Library operates around key public library tenants. Equal access for all. Our mission, helping people of all ages and backgrounds. Intellectual freedom. Libraries protect our freedom to read. They are forums for information and ideas 
and provide materials and information presenting all points of view on current and historical issues, and literacy as an essential life skill. The library is your community place for lifelong learning, and that learning begins at birth and lasts a lifetime. In your packet is the library's most recent annual report. You can find additional statistical information in that report. The library provides story times starting at birth through age six. Children attended the educational programs throughout the year. As adults, we continue to learn and the library offers many opportunities through book discussion groups, films, computer classes, and educational programs. On the right is a photo of Larry O'Meara, retired Crystal Lake South High School principal. He is reading his way through mysteries of Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and Finland. Larry says it really challenges his brain to try to solve mysteries in a translated language. Among the many reasons people come to the library is the value it offers. Pictured on the left is Natalie, who came from a Polish-speaking family and grew up in the library. Natalie volunteered as a VIV at the library. The library's VIV, or Very Important Volunteers, is a summer program for children ages 12 through 16, designed to give young teens some real on-the-job experience by helping with the summer reading program. This volunteer experience also helps the teen when applying for a first job. Natalie was hired as a page at the Crystal Lake Public Library. She graduated valedictorian of her class and is now in college. On the right is Gabriella. Early readers have an insatiable appetite for new books. Imagine buying all of these books. Sally and Stephen Newton taking a technology class are also pictured. While younger people are considered digital natives, meaning they have grown up with a variety of electronic devices, this is not the case for all generations. The library provides classes to bridge that digital divide and help people learn about and enjoy using current day technology. Sally and Stephen said, as senior citizens, we struggle to learn current technologies which is why we love the technology programs at the library. Before taking these classes, I didn't know a download from an upload. Now I actually read books that I downloaded from the library's website on my phone. The teachers at the library are so patient and helpful. We're in and out of the library two to three times a week. The library is part of the educational fabric of our community. In the photo on the left, Veronica is showing a new family, the youth collection, at the District 47 Bilingual Night. In the center, our hands-on science programs support current STEM initiatives at all of our schools. On the right, high school students use the library for a space to work collaboratively and to research papers and projects. They come to enjoy. Children thrive when they have choices and opportunities to participate in different learning settings and to test new ideas within them. Play has an integral role in preparing children to read. The five practices of early literacy are talking, singing, reading, writing, and playing. Children learn best when they're having fun. Children use fine and gross motor skills in their play. They react to each other socially. They think about what they are doing or going to do. They use language to talk to each other or to themselves, and they very often respond emotionally to the play activity. The integration of these different types of behaviors is key to the cognitive development of young children. Because children's play draws upon all of these behaviors, it is a very effective vehicle for learning. Our children's lives are heavily scheduled. The library can provide opportunities for free play that is critical to child development. They come to explore. The little boy on the left had his first experience with a guitar at the musical zoo program last summer. The library gives people the opportunity to explore new things through programs like book folding and Zentangle. 
On the right is Mary at an adult coloring program. Research is showing that coloring has therapeutic potential to reduce anxiety, create focus, or bring about more mindfulness. Just like meditation, coloring also allows us to switch off our brains from other thoughts and focus only on the moment, helping to alleviate free-floating anxiety. People come to do research. 70,000 reference questions answered last year. And this does not include the research people do in the library through the collection or online through our databases. Pictured here is one of our librarians, Julie, who was a contestant on Jeopardy several years ago. Julie attributes years of answering reference questions to her broad base of accrued knowledge. Library staff are trained professionals, skilled at helping you find answers quickly and from reliable sources. We also visit them. We visit people through our homebound service. Library staff select materials and library volunteers deliver to the home. Adult living communities. Ten different locations on a monthly basis. Marsha, pictured on the left, does an educational program and delivers materials. For example, in January the topic was politics. Marsha reports, I brought books written by a number of candidates from both sides of the aisle. We talked about politics, politicians current and historic. We talked about voting and why voting is important. We laughed at political jokes and winter jokes. We sang My Country Tis of Thee at the end of the program. Many children cannot attend story times at the library because they are at daycare or in preschool. Library teachers made 128 visits to preschools where we led outreach story times for 3,500 children. Thousands of school children connect with library staff each May as we go on our school circuit to promote the summer reading program. Research has proven the importance of reading throughout the summer in order to build a bridge from May to September and prevent summer slide. The Crystal Lake Public Library enjoys a wonderful reciprocal relationship with local businesses and other community organizations. We have over 100 summer reading program sponsors who provide reading incentives for the summer reading program. The popularity of the library also helps to create a strong local economy since the library serves as a retail anchor. Last year, patrons from surrounding libraries borrowed 55,000 items from the Crystal Lake Public Library. Studies show that due to multi-shopping, patrons who visit public libraries remain in the area to shop, eat, and enjoy the local entertainment and attractions. Magic happens at a public library that is very personal for each and every individual. When people call or come to the library, each person is treated as an individual since each has a unique reason for visiting. You'll notice the P here on the page. The P is an integral part of the library's logo. The P stands for public patron person. In other words, you and thousands like you. This is intentional and is meant to communicate the value the Crystal Lake Public Library places on serving each person as an individual. Why the public library has been important and helped me in my life has changed and evolved numerous times from the first day my mom took me to the library as a toddler to now. I can't begin to enumerate all the things I have explored and learned, nor recall all the books and movies I have enjoyed. The public library experience is part of me. It has helped shape me. I now have the pleasure of seeing my granddaughter, Elena, pictured here on Mrs. Claus's lap, enjoy the wonders of our public library and all that it has to offer her. Elena represents our future generations. My hope for our children, grandchildren, and future generations is that they will have access to a 21st century public library so they can experience their own personal library magic. The public library is always evolving. Going back to the earlier assumption that the internet is making libraries obsolete, 
There is a similar rationale that due to the advent of electronic resources, that space in libraries is not necessary as it was two decades ago. What we are actually finding is that due to the numerous formats the public demands, we have a need for additional flexible space as the formats continue to change. Take, for example, the book Pride and Prejudice. While 103 years ago, the first Crystal Lake Public Library might only offer the print book, today we have multiple formats. Space for the collections and space for people continue to be our challenges. More than 20 years of space needs assessments show a need for more space. The last addition to the library in 1995 was more than 20 years ago. The 1995 edition was a phase one of a master plan. Crystal Lake was still in its growth stage at that time, so the library board decided to wait for the growth in Crystal Lake to stabilize before determining how much additional space was needed. According to the City of Crystal Lake website, Crystal Lake has experienced a 62% increase in population since the 1990s. Project Shoehorn, completed in 2007, was intended to maximize use of the current space in order to make do for another five years. We are now nine years past Project Shoehorn and space constraints continue to limit the services the library can provide the community. Most people have no idea that 10% of the library's adult collection is in storage, that we regularly must turn people away from programs and cannot accommodate individuals and groups who need public meeting space. We are also missing the benefits of time and labor-saving technologies such as automated materials handling. At the Crystal Lake Public Library today, it can take 72 hours to get materials off of a patron's account after being returned. With automated materials handling, this can be done in one to two seconds. Since a long-standing value of the Crystal Lake Public Library is to provide equal access to materials and services, there is a great concern for how the library space impacts older patrons and those with disabilities. If you visit a modern, more spacious library, you will notice how there are no materials stored on the bottom shelves and the shelf heights are either shorter than those at our library or the collection doesn't reach to the top shelf. We are currently using every bit of shelf space at the Crystal Lake Public Library due to our space limitations and we are weeding one item for every new item added to our collection. In addition, Access to the building from the parking lot for older patrons, those with disabilities, and parents with young children is compromised due to the lack of ground level entry. Space for parking and seating is also a challenge at the busiest times of day. In addition to the amount of space, the library is challenged by the inflexibility of the space. The oldest part of the library, section on the right, is built on unstable ground and cannot handle the book load of 150 pounds per square foot. This further constrains what is possible in the current building. The grade of the property has implications as well. One of our most requested items is a drive up book drop for convenience and safety. This is a question the library board has struggled with numerous times over the years. In exploring options, the board considered two types of book drops. A type of book drop that would be attached to the building and one that would be freestanding. After much investigation, the board found that due to traffic flow issues, our current site does not allow for either type of book drop. Adding a book drop to our current site would also compromise our already limited parking and there are additional safety issues related to getting the books from a freestanding book drop into the building. Even though we maximized use of the space with Project Shoehorn, the legal limits of room capacities means we have to turn people away from story times, programs, and conference room use. Due to the Americans with Disabilities Act, all aisles must be a minimum of 36 inches wide, 
Again, limiting options. The practical challenges are real and can be readily itemized, and yet there are additional intangible consequences to these challenges. The current library facility does not allow space for innovation. While other communities are keeping up with technological advances like automated materials handling, media creation centers, 3D printers, and maker spaces, our library facility doesn't have the space or the infrastructure to support these technologies. As a community, questions we need to ask ourselves are, how do we view our public library? What core levels of library service are important to us? What innovations, new technologies, and learning opportunities do we want available within our community? Do we expect our families and children to go to other communities to experience the latest in public library services? Are we happy being so-so, or do we aspire to be the best as well as the busiest public library in McHenry County? Part of the magic of the public library is its ability to evolve as its public adapts and changes. I look at the next generation and ask myself, how do we keep the magic alive? How do we continue to serve everyone in our community? We are here tonight to engage in community dialogue about our future. We are here to discuss options related to the future of our public library building. Do we leave it but fix it up? Try to adapt it? Build something new? How do we offer cost-effective 21st century public library services now and for generations to come? Thank you for investing your time and thought in this important component of the quality of life in Crystal Lake.